Have you ever thought that 3D printing is like a scaled down 200 degree version of squeezing toothpaste out of the tube? The reason that I bring this up is because it's been helpful for me personally when I'm designing or 3D printing different models and it also helps me avoid printing stuff that looks like this. Let me explain. To make everything as clear as possible, I printed off a few files in different orientations some with a rounded corner, otherwise known as a fillet, and another set with an angled, aka chamfered corner. Each part was printed three different times in three different orientations. One with the corner going up, one with the corner going down as an overhang, and one flat on the surface of the printer. As you can see here, the chamfered versions all came out pretty good, but the filleted ones look pretty bad in some areas, except for the filleted one that was printed flat and it looks pretty good. The reason for that is the orientation of the print bed. As long as your curve is parallel to the bed, otherwise known as the X and Y plane, then the part looks great. The loss in quality occurs when you do a fillet in the up and down direction, otherwise known as the Z plane. Here's the same part, just oriented differently, and you can see how big of a difference it makes. This is where the toothpaste analogy comes in. As long as the curves are parallel with the table, you can make any shape that you want, but as soon as you try to make curves that curve up and out, it makes a mess. What's happening with the curves is that the slicing software is trying to fit a layer line to the curve of the part. Let's pretend this is a cross section of the part with a fillet at the top and that the white pieces are 0.2 millimeter layers. As you can see, the layers fit the line pretty close initially, but as we get closer to the flat part at the top, there are larger gaps, creating the layering or staircasing effect. If we take a close look in the slicer, you can see the staircase here as well. In contrast, chamfers have a consistent slope, so while there is a staircase effect, it is a consistent staircase that looks cleaner. When you compare these two parts in particular, you'll notice that they both have staircasing, but one looks worse than the other. That's because the orientation creates an unsupported overhang. Just imagine trying to make a toothpaste part by putting your toothpaste out into thin air. Here's that exact part in the slicing software, and if we zoom in close, you'll see how this overhang isn't supported at all, which causes the defects you see here on the part. So now that you know why the staircasing effect happens, let's talk about three different ways you can reduce that in your prints. Number one, reorient your print. As I've shown in the examples, just changing the direction that the part is printed can eliminate this issue completely in some cases, but it is dependent on the particular model that you're printing. Number two, use adaptive or variable layer height. If we bring up the same example as before, but instead of only using 0.2 millimeter layers like last time, we actually change to a smaller layer height as we get closer to the flat area. As you can see, this allows the layers to fit the curve better. Here's the same part as before, but with adaptive layer height turned on. You should be able to see how there are thinner layers towards the top of the part. This doesn't eliminate the problem completely, but this method can be useful if you can't redesign the part. Number three, use chamfers. Whenever you can, I highly recommend using chamfers, particularly in the Z direction, but that doesn't mean that you should never use fillets at all. In fact, I actually recommend using a combination of both of them. Let me show you how. To show you what I mean, I made four other parts that show different combinations of fillets and chamfers. This part has fillets in the X, Y, and Z direction, and it has some of the same issues as I've already mentioned before. Compare this with an all chamfer part, which looks better, but it's definitely sort of cyber trucky with all the straight lines. Now part number three uses a chamfer on the corner and then a fillet on the top edges, which still has the same steps that are so prominent. Again, don't use a fillet in the Z direction. But if you reverse the order, where you do the fillet on the edge first and then make a chamfer, you'll get something that looks like this. You get the nice curve of the fillet in the XY plane and the consistent steps with the chamfer in the Z direction. I actually used this technique on the corner covers for the DLAC and Sumo enclosure parts. One last bonus tip if you want to add something like this to your designs would be to use a larger fillet than chamfer. In this example, I'm using a 20 millimeter fillet and a 10 millimeter chamfer. If you use the same size, it ends up making the inside cover of the fillet almost a 90 degree angle. So that's about it. Next time someone posts about this in a Facebook group, help them and me out and send them the link to this video. Thanks for watching.